just be looking for a reason why they should why they should leave so it's not true that they are determined to kill themselves they are looking for a reason to to leave uh there is usually a scale that we use uh in in medicine and psychiatry a simplified scale just to to assess the risk to assess the risk of uh, of suicide uh, in patients that you get it's an acronym we call it the sad person scale where the s stands for sex and females are more likely to attempt suicide actually three to four times more than more than the men but men the the rates of suicide are actually higher in in men one of the reasons given is that men usually go for the more lethal uh, lethal means yeah uh, slitting their throats hanging and such yeah and then also there's the there's this notion that women seek help uh, compared to men i think in in some in some in some cultures it's usually seen as a as a sign of weakness yeah for men to talk about their their moods their emotions yeah so they'll be there strictly suffering and they won't be seeking help yeah so maybe this is some of the reasons why the rates are usually higher in males compared to females and then age extreme of ages the very young and the very old are high risk groups if you have a mood disorder especially depression so so a, it's a high risk uh, in, in this scale for suicide previous attempt this is actually one of the most important uh, factors that you need to consider if there's any previous attempt then you know that your patient is at a higher risk if you have that patient admitted then you might need to consider when when you are discharging them yeah because the risk will still will still be there ethanol and other drug use this might impair your judgment and thinking ethanol is alcohol so yeah so use of substances is also a risk factor rational thinking loss this might occur in the in the aspect of maybe substance use or a primary uh, psychiatric condition like uh, especially the psychotic conditions like schizophrenia where at times you might not actually know what is real from what is unreal yeah and we'll like uh, i think the next the next few slides you'll look at uh, some of the uh, psychiatric conditions that predispose one to uh, to suicide yeah so you can have hallucinations commanding you to jump from a building run across the road yeah so this rational thinking loss those are risk factor Uh, social support lacking and here i don't just mean the family i also talk about the friends uh, colleagues work colleagues yeah so if if there is no social support then it's a very great risk factor organize plan you can ask a, a client or a patient did you have any plan someone will say no it was just a fleeting thought in my mind others will tell you actually yes i'd written natural what i needed for for it to succeed I actually also written what how my assets will be divided between different uh, different people so the presence of an organized plan is a risk factor no spouse being single separated widowed those are risk factors but students no you students uh, finish your school in first year don't but being elderly and you are single those are especially in psychiatry those are greatest factors and then having a chronic uh, illness sickness uh could be diabetes hypertension or even the cancers yeah having a chronic illness also predisposes you to suicide so this is a sad person scale uh quite important especially for the students other societal risk we've talked about the family history if there's a family history of suicide then there's a higher chance that someone else might also attempt or actually die from suicide 
history of adoption, male gender. Most of this actually, most, most of this actually data from the Western world. Parental mental health problems, basically a family history of mental illness. And then LGBT, not feeling accepted and all that. Transgender identification, it also be a factor. History of physical or sexual abuse, not being able to sort of get over it in quotes, you know, you've not, you've not had therapy, you know, it keeps on recurring. That can also later on lead, especially in early childhood, yeah, it, can, it, it will affect, it can affect someone up to adulthood if, it's, if, it is not, uh, if it is not managed. So this can eventually lead, uh, lead to suicide attempts or even uh, self-harm behavior later on in life. And as we've mentioned, previous suicide attempts are also, also a very great risk factor. And then now we have the psychiatric conditions that predisposes one to, predisposes one to suicide, including depression, mood disorders, basically. You have the major depression, you have the bipolars, substances, using substances, alcohol, cannabis, cocaine, heroin, Psychotic uh, conditions like schizophrenia, uh, post traumatic stress disorder, if you've undergone a traumatic event and then it has not been, uh, later on, it wasn't managed well, uh, it, it, it can actually predispose you to, uh, to higher chances of suicide later on. Panic attack and panic disorders history of aggression, psychosis, we've talked about that, impulsivity, severe anger. So all these, yeah, chronic medical conditions we've used, we've seen, and also pathologic internet use, which we'll uh, talk about, about it uh, later on. So all these are, increases the risk for, of suicide for a person. This is sort of like a repetition, like most of this you've mentioned, alcohol being a very significant factor, implicated in more than 25% of suicides. So talked about the chronic conditions, hostile social or school environment, bullying in schools. I think we've heard of, uh, of uh, incidences in high schools, even in universities where People have been subjected to excessive bullying and eventually they just decide to take their lives. Lack of support network, we've mentioned a prior suicide attempt and all that. Have a look at this uh, pie chart. The left one talks about uh, diagnosis, the distribution of psychiatric diagnosis by people, of people who died by suicide. These were inpatients, the left. And then the right is the general population, yeah? So if you look among the sort of like the comorbidity, yeah? Or uh, the axis one diagnosis in psychiatry, quite actually almost all the conditions in psychiatry can predispose you to, uh, to suicide or having suicidal ideations, yeah? See, the greatest uh, is uh, mood disorders, especially major depressive disorder, followed by schizophrenia. And then in the general population, still mood disorders and then substance related. So th there's, there's a great correlation between having a psychiatric uh, diagnosis and risk of suicide. So how, how will you tell that someone is suicidal? Someone can actually tell you that I feel like taking my life. But then that may not be some, in some instances it may not be that clear. Yeah? So someone with a sense of hopelessness or no hope for the future. Uh, for the doctors, for the medical students, uh, psychologists, counselors, I think you know of the cognitive triad. Yeah? the back triad of depression, yeah? 
talks about feelings about themselves, about the how they view the environment, how they view the future. Yeah, yeah so they just feel hopeless. They have, they have no hope for the future. They feel isolated. Someone feels isolated, or feeling alone. You know, you can be in a crowd, you can be in a room full of people, but you feel alone. You know, it may be quite difficult to understand, yeah? But those are, that's the feeling. Irritability, aggressiveness, you know, you're just on the edge. Leave me alone, you don't want to be told anything. You're, you're just feeling tensed up. Uh, possessing lethal means, these are medications. And at times I usually fault our, our pharmacies. Yeah? You know, giving medications uh, without giving drugs without any prescription, especially the psychotropics, yeah, two or three month uh, doses of medication, having sharp objects or weapons, Talk about the negative view of self, I'm worthless, drastic changes in mood and or behavior, uh, frequently talking or writing about death. You, you must have seen some Facebook posts, some Twitter, or some people will just write some long poems, yeah? And then maybe the, the theme will be mostly on death. So someone will just be throwing questions there. If I died, will anyone miss me and such, yeah? So this could be some early telltale signs. I've just, uh, I've just summarized in this uh, pictorial. the making threats, the negative self-view, feeling isolated, frequently talking about death, self-harm. So how, how do you recover from a suicidal attempt? Yeah, by the way, I want to, I want to look at the aspect that we've managed the acute, uh, the, the emergency here. Yeah? So someone was attempting, someone, a patient had a suicide uh, attempt, and then uh, uh, the family or friends uh, sort of like go to him in time, go to him or her in time. First aid was administered, was taken to hospital, and then after that, what next? There's no specific management for suicide. Basically, it might depend, and it will depend on the what was some, what was any underlying factor? And as we've seen, mental illness uh, poses quite a great whatever contributor to those, to those factors. So here yeah, I just, I've just talked about some of the uh, management plans that are uh, available for patients who, for mental ill patients who might have attempted uh, suicide. So we talk about antipsychotics uh, in schizophrenia. Schizophrenic patients. Schizophrenia, as I've mentioned, it's, it's a condition that uh, it's a psychotic condition characterized by, among other symptoms, hallucinations and delusions. Yeah, you keep on hearing voices of unseen people. Uh, you keep on thinking that maybe everyone is against you. And how does this maybe lead someone towards suicide? Yeah, we talked about the hallucinations. Yeah. Uh, I, I know the students might be aware of the third person body hallucinations, yeah? Running commentary. Can you imagine 24 hours a day, a voice, eh? a voice is just telling you, no, sort of like insulting you every minute of the day. Yeah, look at that person, quite worthless. Eh? What? Some people just feel now maybe the only way out will be to, uh, to kill themselves so that the, the voices uh, stop uh, disturbing them, uh, to put it that way, yeah? But th these things are treatable, they are manageable. So th the sooner we, we, we treat uh, such conditions, yeah, then the better outcome will be. Mood stabilizers in patients who have bipolar, uh, research has shown that uh, some medication, some mood stabilizers, especially like lithium, has a propensity of reducing suicidal uh, behavior and ideation in, in bipolar patients. Then there's a behavioral therapy called dialectical behavioral therapy, especially in patients with borderline personality disorder. This is to reduce the incidences of uh, self-injurious behavior. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy in major depressive disorder. 
sort of like correct those uh, cognitive distortions, yeah? The thoughts that they're not loved, that the world is against them, yeah? So we'll, we'll require maybe cognitive behavioral therapy. And then electroconvulsive therapy and also antidepressants in a major depressive disorder. And as we've seen also substance use is a, a great contributor to, uh, to the suicide data in Kenya. So management of substance use disorder, we also need to put emphasis on that. So in terms of suicide prevention, how do you prevent? Is it preventable? Yes, it is. So as, as we've seen, it is not bad to ask a patient whether they have thoughts of taking their own life. So you can actually ask, and maybe the, uh, the patient, the client will open up and tell you more about what, what they are undergoing. Keep them safe. So you basically reduce a person's access to highly lethal items, guns, knives, rope or drugs yeah or medications yeah because there are even some medications that are helpful in management of a condition but taken in excess amounts can actually uh, lead to fatalities be sympathetic and non-judgmental i think this is uh, important by the, by the mere fact that they are talking to you about their feelings that you should uh, you, you should be sympathetic and also hear them out Offer hope, reassure them that the suicidal feelings are temporary and things will get better. Uh, take the person seriously. Be there, listen carefully and learn what the individual is thinking and feeling. Help them connect to networks, uh, support groups. There are even very good uh, WhatsApp groups here. Yeah? that encourage uh, members so can connect them to such. And also stay connected, keeping in touch after a crisis, after being discharged, don't abandon. So follow-up is important. But we also don't, yeah? There are some things that we should not do, especially with a suicidal patient. Don't argue. So avoid saying things. I think uh, these are common, common mistake we usually make. You know, you have so much going for you. Why, why, why are you even thinking of? Eh? You have your family. You have your kids. The patients, the clients know that, yeah. So it's just like you are reinforcing. I don't know. Don't don't reinforce that. They they know it already, and you are just sort of like increasing the heart. You are rich. Why would you think of even killing yourself? It may not be about the about the money. Don't act shocked. Lecture on the value of life or argue that suicide is wrong. I don't know whether some of our religious institutions might be guilty of this. Quoting verses in the holy books. Promise confidentiality. Do not promise confidentiality. Uh, for the medical personnel here, I think you know that one of the instances where you can actually breach the confidentiality clause is issues of suicide. Yeah? So don't, don't promise what you know you might not keep. Yeah? Because if, if a patient confides that they are suicidal, then you might actually need to inform uh, other people. So don't promise confidentiality. Don't offer ways to fix to your loved one's problems. Someone might have issues, relationship, money-wise. Don't be in quotes, maybe... What Father Christmas you can solve? Yes, something like that. Blame yourself. You can't. Don't blame yourself. You can't fix someone else's depression. So do what you can, yeah. But also don't let it be sort of like a burden. You start blaming yourself because you might also find yourself in the same situation. What's the role of the media? It's quite tricky. Media is sort of like a double-edged sword. It's good and bad at the same time. We've seen that there are some instances where the media has led to an increase in suicide, especially among the young, the youth, what we call cluster suicides. Sometimes media, there is a, 
the mainstream media will sensationalize suicide, put the stories in the, on the front, front page, headlines and all that, yeah? Which might actually encourage others to attempt. This is the mainstream and then now we have the social media. Social media can promote inadequacy about your life or appearance. If you keep on looking at Instagram, you saw the guys, eh? people are living large and you are just there, you are a student eh? with nothing. You go to the mess, you go to lecture hall, you go to your room. Eh? So you feel quite in, inadequate and that can also uh, lead to suicidal thoughts. Fear of missing out, things are happening while you're just locked up in your room studying looking at Facebook posts, still Instagram, such. So maybe you can also promote isolation. It has been noted that high usage of Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram actually increases rather than decrease our feelings of hopelessness. So let's be careful. Cyberbullying is quite uh, rampant. I gave the example of Twitter. Yeah? You know, someone you don't even know you write a comment and then the replies that you get back you wonder why did I what did I even attempt? Yeah. Someone who doesn't know you and they throw hmm, some matusi in Baka Yuanda. So cyberbullying is there. And then also self-absorption, yeah. You're always on Instagram, Facebook, you no. Know? It it can lead to self-absorption, yeah. Maybe builds up some narcissism, I don't know but self-absorption is also a risk. But there are also some positive effects of social media. You can communicate and stay up to date with family and friends around the world. Uh, you can find new friends and communities. You can join or promote worthwhile causes. You can seek or offer emotional support during tough times. You can find vital connections if you live in a remote area. So it, it has both good and bad sides, yeah? So it's up to you to actually limit and know what is good for you and maybe leave out the, the bad bit of it. So the silence, the topic of today was silence uh, around uh, suicide. Yeah? One of the major contributors of silence is the stigma that is associated with uh, suicide. And according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, stigma is a mark of shame or discredit. So these are negative attitudes and beliefs people usually have eh, against people who have mental health condition, including suicidal ideations. So what is the end game of stigma around mental health and suicide? It will lead to reluctance to seek help. Uh, that is one. It leads to feelings of shame, lack of understanding, and by the way, when you talk about uh, when you talk about uh, stigma, maybe I just need to clarify a bit. There are three things you need to consider. Yeah, there is the public stigma. Yeah, how others sort of like view you, who has maybe a mental health issue, and then there is the self stigma. Now that will be the effect of how the general public views you, leading to how you view yourself, yeah? And then label av avoidance. Now you're trying to uh, avoid being labeled, yeah? Uyu ni mtuwa madhare, uyu ni mtuwa wapi, you know? Uyu ni derogatory terms, eh? That can be used. So stigma can also lead to lack of understanding. Uh, lack of understanding by family, friends, co-workers or others can lead to fewer opportunities for work, school, or social activities. By that time, I'm usually in a fix, yeah? You, you'll get a client who wants a letter to take to their, to their supervisor or bosses, eh? But this can be tricky because it can actually lead to either stigmatization if it wasn't there and also maybe sort of like enhance the stigma that was there. Yeah. Well, some people have actually been left out of uh, promotions and other opportunities because they have a mental 
they have a mental health issue. So I'm usually not for the idea of writing letters that this person has this or this condition, unless you feel that uh, that information will be helpful for your patient or client, but it can actually sort of lead to stigmatization at their places of work. Stigma can lead to bullying, physical violence or harassment. And we also know, we, we also aware that health insurance most of the time doesn't cover for mental health illnesses, yeah? So you, you'll be in the hospital, maybe a patient with major depressive disorder, with suicidal in, uh, ideation or had a suicidal attempt. When the insurance uh, hears of that, then they, they refuse to, uh, to cover the, the bill. These are things that happen. And then still in this age, uh, day and age, we are, we, we are still criminalizing uh, suicide. So according to the penal code, any person who attends to, this is Kenya, any person who attends to kill himself or herself is guilty of a misdemeanor. And the penalty is up to two years in prison or a fine or both. So will someone really confide in you that they're suicidal? They'll be wondering whether you'll snitch on them, yeah? Le leading them to being, being sentenced and uh, jailed. I've just given an example. This one I got from the internet. From It's an excerpt from the Kenya Law Publication where a lady was charged, uh, this was in Kitui County, with intent, with intent of uh, killing herself. She attempted to kill herself by taking an, a poison named diazonal, phosphate. So she was actually tried and convicted and sentenced to serve two years. So you can imagine someone with a mental, with a mental condition Instead of seeking, instead of getting help, we are actually punishing them. Yeah. Oh, this is actually what is what what in my view is contributing to the stigma uh, in psychiatry and mental health in general. So, what can we do to help? Get the mental health treatment you need. Try not to let the fear of being labeled with a mental illness stop you from getting help, you want to be better, do you, do you, so go get the medicine because you know it will, it will assist you. And then don't just, don't believe everything that you hear. Mental illness is not a sign of weakness, but I'm happier. Uh, since, uh, especially for the medical, medical students, some might have had issues earlier on in, in life, or earlier on in the education. But once they get to the clinical years, they have an experience of psychiatry, then they can relate some of the, maybe some of the symptoms they or their relatives or their friends had, yeah, with what is being talked about. So that is helpful. Do not hide away. Reach out to people you trust, your family, friends, religious leaders, circle of friends, basically. Mm. Sorry, have I? Yes, connect with others. Your illness should not define you. And don't define yourself by your illness. The using of the terms I'm schizophrenic I'm, or even I'm diabetic, that shouldn't be the case. Eh? And then it's not personal. Remember that other people's judgments often come from a lack of understanding rather than anything else, yeah? So it's just ignorance, yeah? So try to understand it that way. Uh, in closing, yeah, where can you get help? All the mentioned uh, people here are uh, mental health practitioners, mental health workers. We have psychiatrists. Psychiatrists are doctors uh, who've gone through medical uh, school. Have In Kenya, they have MBCHB. And then they've done a postgraduate uh, course in psychiatry. Yeah, so they'll be able to, they should be able to diagnose, manage, 
in terms of uh, prescribing medication, offering some form of therapy to mental health uh, patients. Then we have psychologists. Here we have the clinical, we have the counseling, psychologists. And then other terms that I also used, uh, maybe to refer to psychologists and our counselors, therapists, so all this. Then we have psychiatric nurses. Most universities usually have counselors who the dean of students. Most and most of the counselors actually have uh, some some knowledge, some some basic knowledge or some knowledge in in counseling. Some will actually be psychologists, clinical or counseling psychologists. And then we also have social workers, also very important in in follow up and management of some of uh, some of these conditions. So someone who is suicidal, all these are people that uh, he or she can reach out to. I've also put up a, a list. There's a helpline, hotline number 1199. This is run by Red Cross. It's toll free, so you can just call and it's available 24 seven. Someone in a crisis, this is a, it's a great number to, to have to save. Then you also have the Befrienders Kenya. Uh, the contacts are there. And then we'll also have, uh, these are list of, uh, these are list of uh, clinic, uh, uh, psychologists, clinical and counseling that are available online. But they, I think there was a question I'd seen about uh, the effects of, uh, of COVID on uh, psychiatry and mental health, yeah? Things have changed a bit. Uh, most of the times we, we no longer do face-to-face -face consultations unless a patient is, uh, is admitted in the wards and you have to take all the necessary precautions yeah, in terms of the personal protective equipment. But most of our interactions with patients and clients nowadays is uh, via online, uh, like Google Meet via Google Meet, uh, Zoom, phone calls, WhatsApp. So most of this... Uh, Psychologists are available uh, for consultations, but these are not free. They, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's some fee that might be charged to consult. This is a list of some of the psychologists that I could get their contacts. And that's my email address in case anyone has any questions or comments that might not be well dealt with during this session. Then uh, the Kenya Psychiatric Association is our umbrella organization for psychiatrists and also psychologists. So in case of uh, issues, you can also reach out to, to KPA using the number provided and also the email address. And can people maybe sort of like uh, survive in quotes, uh, suicide, suicide uh, attempt survivors? Do we have them? Yes. And some are what you call celebs in Kenya. So this last slide will just be some of the celebs that have actually had depressive episodes, suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts, and come out stronger. So suicide can be prevented, can be managed, and you can actually live without without suicidal thoughts. Or it, it's not it's not permanent. Basically, that's what I want to say. Thank you. I think that's the end of the slides. Sure. Hello. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nari, for the nice presentation. 
And uh, from the chat box, I can see there are a lot of questions coming in. Okay. There are a lot of questions that I think we can share and uh, maybe go through some. Uh, like uh, previously. Yes. Uh, there, there was one, one, one of the one one of the myths you say that uh, it it does not always have to come with a psychiatric illness. I can't find the question. Mm. So someone asked uh, that: Is it can can it be labeled as a as a psychiatric illness on its own? And if so, what is the management? It might not be. It cannot be labeled as psychiatric. You know, psychiatry it's quite. Uh, we we have uh, what 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 I'll call uh, the what 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 we use to base our diagnosis on yeah, and in yes. psychiatry we have what we call the DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. We also have uh, the ICD, National Classification of Diseases. Currently, we think in tenth or eleventh uh, revision, so it is not listed as as a standalone diagnosis. In, in in psychiatry yeah so for now if we think but the majority of the times yeah, you might actually it it usually there's not that bit of comorbidity uh i think for the few years that i've practiced psychiatry all the person all the patients all the cases that i've uh, come across have actually had a psychiatric comorbidity but yes there's that no, we talked about some who don't have a psychiatric uh, issue. Like uh, I, I saw somewhere an example given was uh, someone who is in who is in debt or trying to trying to get out of a debt uh, situation. Maybe trying to prevent them themselves from being declared bankrupt and such. They may take that route, yeah. And there's no history of. Uh, maybe mental illness and all that. So there, there is still that chance, but uh, there's still that uh, portion of, uh, of patients, of people who have no psychiatric comorbidity. But most of the time, there's usually an axis one diagnosis in conjunction with the attempt. I, I don't know whether I've answered that, Rodney. But according to the DSM-5, there's no standalone diagnosis. Hello. Yes, um, thank you, Dr. So um, I hope Mnani is here. So I'll just continue with the questions. Yes. Um, uh, when we were talking about the myth around suicide. Yes. Um, there's, a, there's a comment on once a person is suicidal, yes. the likelihood of them being suicidal is higher or something. Can you elaborate on that? Once a person is suicidal. I think there was, a, the, the myth is maybe once someone is suicidal, he or she will always remain. Mm. Is it that? Yes. Uh, what I said was that the heightened suicide risk is often short term and mm. it's in quite specific situations. So I'll give an example, yeah? Uh, someone with uh, a depressive condition, yeah? And then sort of they, they've had a relapse. And in this relapse, maybe it it's, uh, also comes with uh, uh, some psychotic involvement. So they have some delusions where they feel that the world or everyone is against them, yeah? Everyone hates them. There's no point in, in going on in, with life, yeah? So you see, these are sort of like short, they're, they're not long-standing issues, yeah? Because once you put these patients on treatment, be it uh, pharmacological or uh, others, yeah? Physical like uh, ECT, then there'll be some resolution of the symptoms, yeah? So you don't expect someone to have suicidal thoughts maybe from, January to December. That's why I'm saying it's uh, there's some usually short-term specific specific uh, issues that might increase the suicidal risk, but you don't expect someone to be suicidal that 
uh, for that long duration of time. So you'll have episodes. You might have episodes, yeah, different episodes, yeah. Yeah. but it's not it's not a chronic thing. Like you are suicidal okay. from January to December. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Um, there's a question on helplines. I can see we already dealt with that. Okay. Um, someone is asking, how does income relate to suicide? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> especially in this uh, in this COVID area era. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, th there are some studies that have have actually been done and shown that uh, you know many people are being laid off. Huh? I'm having, yeah. I'm having salary cuts. Yeah. So it was noted in some areas. I, I can't remember the exact study that actually the, the they sampled a number of people, yeah, who have, who have undergone the layoffs and the salary cuts, and actually suicidal thoughts among that that group was found to be quite quite raised. Yeah? Uh, mm. Right, yeah, the suicidal risk. But then, also remember that uh, you can have a very rich, wealthy person, but they'll still be suicidal. So it might not be directly correlated to to to, to your income to to cash. Yeah. So, mm. but I think maybe looking if if you combine it with other maybe in the other situation that the person might be undergoing, yeah. Mm. We can actually say that it might be a factor. Mm. Level of income. Okay. Yes, yeah. You've been laid off, you have kids to take to school, you have this yeah, bills are school. piling up. Yeah, so you might it might actually very easily lead you into sort of like a mental breakdown, into a depressive episode. That might be the cause. Okay. Mm. Um is gambling a psychiatric disorder? <laughs> we have gamblers. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Let me. And to and to confirm with the, the exact uh, DSM five, uh, <laughs> the exact DSM five diagnosis. But gambling, yes, yes, it is. Huh? Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Um... If you have a gambling problem, where do you go? What do you do about it? It's an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's an addiction like any other, yeah? It's an addiction like alcohol, uh, basically substance or sexual addiction. So it should be managed the same way. So we just need to talk to a mental health practitioner. I won't, uh, I won't limit to say you talk to a psychiatrist. You can even talk to a psychologist, yeah? And then I'm sure you'll get uh, the necessary help. Assistance, okay. Yes. Um, something, this is a question here. Um, what is the best way to approach a peer or approach the subject to someone you're worried about if they're not particularly forthcoming, but you're worried that they may have um, suicide ideation? Ideation, yes. Ideation. Yeah. So they are not. Uh, maybe it is not overt that they they tell you, but you can actually. Yeah, you you notice the behavioral change. The um, yeah. Okay, you might actually need to involve others. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it's your if it's your friend, you might actually need to involve maybe the family, because uh, you know there, there's something we we call insight in in psychiatry, where someone might actually not be aware that they have an issue. So it is you, mm -hmm. you maybe as a friend or an acquaintance will actually tell. Eh? So to them, they are, they are okay, they're quite okay. But now it's you to actually pinpoint this and get help for them. Okay. Yes. Um, what are practical measures to prevent reoccurrence or attempts or thoughts of self-harm either by an individual or that of a loved one? Sorry, what are practical measures that um, can use to prevent reoccurrence or um, repeated attempts of self harm or suicide? 
But there are reasons why people self-harm, yeah? Mm -hmm. They're cutting themselves and all that. Huh? It could be as a result of tension, of anxiety, of depression. So when they self-harm, when they cut themselves, they feel a bit of relief. Or if someone has some has a, some has has depression, what what we what I call that cognitive triad yeah? of self worthlessness, yeah. So it's sort of like they're punishing themselves. So maybe mm -hmm. the only way uh, I think that should be dealt with is uh, let them seek uh, let them seek help so that they can be started on medication for their primary diagnosis cause. Most of the time, the self-harm, self-harming behavior is just a symptom. It's, it's, it's not a diagnosis in itself, most of the time. So it, it could just be a symptom of something else. So why are they self-harming? Are they blaming themselves for something? Are they anxious? Are they what, yeah? So we actually need to, uh, to manage the primary, the primary condition. So let, them, let them seek help. Mm. There'll be no... Quick, quick fix solution. Quick fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, for persons without underlying mental illness, can we say the decision to commit suicide is conscious? Mm -hmm. For some, we are assuming they are not having any underlying issues. Underlying, yeah. And they are not under the influence of substances and all that. Yes. Yeah, I think you can say that because there's uh, we've actually seen there's some there's a number of uh, people that will commit suicide with no history of mental illness. Yeah. Yes. So they are they are consciously going through that decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. In terms of um, derogatory terms in relation to mental health. Yes. Uh, which ones in particular should we do away with? Um, for example, is it okay to say um, suicide is selfish? I don't. I don't see how that would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's pretty. I've had that. I've seen that a lot on the streets uh, of social media. Uh, yeah, trying to justify some issues. It's it's not okay. It's not okay. We've gone through the reasons why maybe people will feel that they need to to get out of the situations that they are, and maybe according to them, the only way is through suicide. Yeah. So it's not mm. it's 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 not a selfish. You no. Know, okay. Some will will strip the patients, the clients. No, oh, you have kids. You have what? But but they, just be sure that the patient or the client knows that. Yeah. But they still mm. think that the only way. So un unless we manage, if there's a primary issue, then I think it would be quite unfair to label uh, those patients as uh, selfish. Yes. Um, also something else um, is, have we overrated the role of religion in dealing with mental ill health? Have we? Have we overrated the mm. role of religion in dealing with mental ill health? Okay. The, like, re, is religion a suitable blanket for all mental issues or mental... Yeah. I know, re religion, it's, it's quite controversial. I don't know whether I want to get <laughs> <laughs> into that. It has to uh, be addressed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, uh, you know, just give, giving an example of suicide, eh? mm. you know, some religious leaders will actually quote the holy books that say that uh, if you commit suicide, then you, you cannot, mm. you cannot go to heaven, you cannot do this. So mm. you, you can imagine a person having issues, going to a, a priest or any other religious leader, and then they are sort of like admonished, yeah? How do you have yeah. these thoughts? These thoughts are satanic. No. Uh, I don't think it will be helping, it will be helping matters, so religion is tricky. <laughs> <laughs> On religion, at what point do we stop telling people to pray about it? 
or like when someone tells you this is what they are going through the first instinct the first answer or response you get in this in our cultural pray. setup is pray okay you no know? yeah so what will you be telling ethics because we also have ethics among our <laughs> as the client <laughs> and patients it may be <laughs> glory or religion is tricky i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into issues with uh, religious guys here. Sawa sawa. Um someone is noting that uh, access to um uh, mental health uh, services in rural areas areas is a challenge and that MOH needs to do something about it. It's true. Uh, I think uh maybe just to make a comment on that, yeah. I think it 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 all goes down to to stigma. But the stigma it's not only the public to the patients yeah. No there's also mm. stigma between <laughs> doctors. <laughs> yeah, this psychiatrist and yeah, so mental health it's it's stigmatized even in terms of funding. If you look at what MOH Ministry of Health allocates to uh, to mental health. But then you know Madare Madari Hospital is a national referral yeah the same status mm. as 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 KNH as KNH but, but if if you've been there you you, you Luanda mm. yeah it's, it's the issue of stigmatization so there's no funding for training for sustaining the the few health facilities that offer mental health so i think it all boils down to stigma but mm. we are I think we, we we've tried to open up uh, we, we are talking about mental health uh when i was training uh for postgrad i think we were how many you we are around 6 or 7 currently we have around 70 uh registrars in training in psychiatry so we've seen that we are, we've sort of like demystified psychiatry so very yeah, soon we are hoping that we'll have psychiatrists in every county in every region of this country yeah okay mm. uh thank you dr tari what's the difference between suicide and para suicide if you remember the definition yeah that i give suicide uh you know there is that sort of like thinking that you want to end your life that thinking might, might actually be overt where you you've said it or covert from your actions yeah the things that you've been doing yeah para suicide in some books some literature para suicide is actually equated to what what we've been talking about deliberate self harm yeah where there is sort of like an attempt but the end result is not meant to be fatal yeah we okay. are not meant to die from that from that uh, yeah so i think that's that's the only difference that's the only difference okay mm-hmm. um could you address assisted suicide and uh physician assisted suicide mm, assisted suicide mm. that's a tricky one <laughs> Are we talking about uh in the situation where someone is uh having maybe a chronic yeah i i think condition. it's interesting to that will that be suicide per se or euthanasia <laughs> yes is <laughs> that, uh, that euthanasia Okay. Yeah, so it's I don't know. I think I'll go with euthanasia. That's 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 that's, that's not suicide. That's also said that's euthanasia. Yeah, so yeah. just something brief on euthanasia in our country. It's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Because all I can say, yeah. Actually very few countries. Allowed. Yeah, it's it's not it's yeah, you actually not allowed to take your life even in whatever situation. no matter how you are suffering so you can't even ask uh, medical uh, personnel to assist you i think there are very few countries is it netherlands or 
where you where we have such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But that can, that can be an interesting topic by right there. That can be an interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely yeah. interesting. But suicide, uh, suicide, no, I don't think. I think we just call it euthanasia. Uh, okay, we want to go into um, if it is moral or immoral uh, right now. <laughs> That's a whole other chunk of topic. Yes. Um, Let's see, as we wind up, um, um, is there some form of mental first aid for suicide? Mm, no, this is after, after the attempt, I'm, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Once we are done with the emergency issues, first aid and all that, yeah? Is that so? Um, pardon? I'm assuming this is after the emergency interventions, maybe someone has taken organophosphates that has been dealt with. And then mm. now we come in as a, is that it? I'm a, what kind of emergency? Yeah, it's strictly mental, mental first aid. Mental first aid. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it'll be sort of like, I think, crisis intervention, yeah? So... Mm. When someone is stabilized, I think you, you, you might need to just get the, uh, the, the feeling, the idea behind that decision that they, they, they undertook. Even as you're trying to, to get the risk, the, 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 risk uh, the risk factors that might have contributed to, uh, to that attempt. So this shouldn't be done maybe when someone is sprawled on the floor after ingesting this is when someone has uh, sort of what, not, not recovered, yeah, but got, has gotten back. The, yes, the, the, the medical emergency has been taken care of, yeah? Mm. yeah and then we, now we can, we can start looking at the crisis intervention in terms of what, what, what risk factors were there and what can, what can urgently be done, yeah, maybe to improve that. An example would be if it, if the suicide attempt was secondary to uh, another axis one, another mental condition, like maybe uh, depression. Yeah, you can actually have what 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 I'd mentioned earlier, ECT, as an mm -hmm. as an emergency procedure. Yeah, yeah, or even oh. psychotherapy, the cognitive behavioral therapy, just trying to to gauge what, what, could there be some distortions in, in your patient's thinking that might have contributed to, uh, to this episode. Mm -hmm. But this should, uh, after the patient now settled, has recovered from that emergency episode, especially the medical beat. Okay. Um, are there any movements or plans to include mental health conditions um, to be covered by health insurance? But the, the constitution actually outlaws any discrimination in that aspect, yeah? Yeah, so mm. most of these insurance uh, companies just take advantage, I don't know, of, of people's ignorance or what, yeah? Oh, yeah, you didn't yeah. check what you said before. Because mm. if, 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 if they feel threatened, yeah, you, like you threaten to uh, take the issue forward to court and all that, yeah, they, they actually cover. So according mm. to the constitution, you should not discriminate anyone, yeah? Uh, depending yes. on their health and all that, so okay. yeah, it's it's quite clear what what the constitution uh, says about that. But I think the health, this yeah, these insurers are just testing waters. Eh? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, someone still needs clarity on the difference between euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference, Gloria? Um, <laughs> um, this is Makuno. Makuno, unless you tell us more about this. Um, uh, Makuno will actually write a paper on that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, I think um, we'll get with it, but the rest we can 
Yeah. Which requires actually a different maybe for um, talk about Indonesia. Um Margaret is raising an issue on when someone um attempts suicide and they're taken to the hospital. Yes. There is some sort of stigma around it and doc some doctors don't attend to them. They say that the since the person wants to die, they should be left to die. Is that a factual uh... <laughs> um, I, I, someone I, I is don't... speaking from ex their experience? I don't think so. If a doctor has uh, taken uh, the Hippocratic oath, I don't think you can say that, yeah. Uh, this person it's actually from experience, J Quart Hospital. Uh. Yes, and Pika level five. <laughs> a doctor, that that I think that's that's quite an ethical. Mm. ethical. But actually, the, the issue of stigma is there. So you you'll get someone who came with organophosphate poisoning, managing the wards, and then on discharge, yeah, but they they've mm. not had any contact with any mental health uh, practitioners, and then on discharge, they'll be discharged home. So this is like three or four days, yeah. So they'll mm -hmm. be discharged home through the psychiatric clinic for counseling. Actually, that's, that's the word uh, people like using, mm. for counseling. Yeah, so I think it's, it's okay. just, part of the, just part of the stigma that surrounds mental health. This person has not received um, any assistance while in the world, and they just discharged like that. Okay. Um, lastly, finally, mm. um, uh, someone is asking about um, self first aid. Like, um, what do you do um, when you notice? How do you take care of yourself when you notice you're having suicidal thoughts, things like that? Like self first aid. How do you go about it on your own? But but I'm happy. The I think there are few cases that I'm aware of that actually have reached out to me uh, or to their circle of friends, yeah? So, remember I told you that uh, suicide, suicidal ideations, these are some of the few exceptions uh, in medicine to confidentiality clause, yeah? So, try talking to someone else. No, you can't say, I'll, I'll deal with it myself. I'm having suicidal thoughts. So it might be difficult, yeah? Because what, what is causing, you know, like I said, you've been having like major depressive disorder for a while, yeah? So why are you having this, these suicidal thoughts at this particular time? Is there something that might have happened? Is it something with your meds? So there are some situations, there are some triggers that have, that have made the situation yeah. worse, yeah? Yeah, so... Just seek help from your circle. Okay. It doesn't have to be uh, through to a doctor. Your circle of friends, your WhatsApp friends, your family, your confidant. If your buddies, so if your pastor, talk to someone. Or someone wants to. Uh, someone wants to. I heard a voice. To contribute ah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think so okay um, so yeah. that's it for Basically, the Q &A. Okay, someone. yeah okay that's it for the Q and a thank you Dr. Uh, yes we really appreciate um, I'm hoping we've learned a lot I know we have we hope really I've have not, hope I've not confused you more <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I wanted no, to I, simplify it as much as possible. I hope I've not <laughs> made things worse. Then we leave it open. Um, so um, you can reach out if you have more questions. Dr. Richard, his email, you can reach out to him. You can reach out to any of us through our WhatsApp groups, and uh, we'll get back to you on how we go about that. So I'd just love to have um, um. Uh, Benjamin, is Benjamin in? Nyariki? I am, I am. Hi, Gloria. Okay, thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Allow me to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Munga for such an enlightening uh, discussion. 
it's been i mean it has opened us to ideas and to, to information that we do not have any uh inform i mean idea about so also allow me to thank uh the participants who have been patient since we started this session until now uh thank you so much for joining us and uh I want to believe that we are going to have uh, more sessions like this. Also, uh, amid the uh, the pandemic and and everything, I hope that all of us are uh, keeping safe and uh, uh, at least trying to do something that uh, will look back to this moment and uh, say that we used this opportunity well. So uh, I'm here to represent the SCOMA which is the Standing uh, Committee on Medical Education and Research and uh, the Federation of African Medical Students Association. So this is uh, basically uh, a committee that is charged with uh, coming up with ways of, uh, of looking at the gaps in medical education for, for the medical students in Africa, and also trying to, uh, to come up with ways to improve this I mean, to, to, to cover this gap so that there is uh, improvement in acquisition of the skills and also knowledge so that uh, we as students who are training to become doctors can become even better doctors. So on behalf of uh, FAMSA, that is Federation of African Medical Students, on behalf of uh, SCOMA, uh, my team in Kenya, and also on behalf of... Uh, the chairman for SCOMA in Kenya, and also I myself, I want to thank all of you for joining us for this session. This is just uh, the first or the second to many more such enlightening sessions. So Gloria, thank you once again. Back to you, Gloria. So I thank you. Thank you, Benjamin Karibu. We look forward to more partnerships. Um, lastly, I want to have a swing in. Swain Churchill to give a final word. Um, uh, okay, I'm seeing she's not in, so we'll just we'll conclude um, from the Standing Committee of Mental Health and Sake. We want to thank you all for being so nice, for bearing with us even as we skipped the time limit to Machine Lapa. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're looking forward to more talks. Daktari, we will invite you again and again. So I hope you are You're welcome. Yes, this has been a beautiful session. Thank you everyone for attending. You know, pat yourself on the back. Yeah. And to more enlightening sessions. Sawa sawa. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Nice evening. <laughs>